Today I've got a fun strategy-based slash game problem uh, from TBO's problem solving booklet. This is useful for students who are looking to prepare for their mathematics interviews at either Oxford or Cambridge, um, slash if you just want to see some interesting problems. Um, we have this here. We have two people playing a game. There are N suites in a pile, and they each take it in turns to remove at least one suite from the pile whilst ensuring that they take no more than half of what remain. The person who removes the last suite is the loser. Are there any values of N for which the second player has a winning strategy? Okay, so let's just maybe clarify this with an example. Let's say we have N is five. So we have five suites there in a pile. And let's say it's my go first. I can choose either one suite to remove or two suites to remove because I'm not allowed to take more than half. So half of five would be 2.5. So I wouldn't be allowed to take three because that's bigger than 2.5. So I can maybe take one or two suites away. Maybe I take two suites away. Then it's the other person's go. And because there are three suites now that are left, um, they can either take one suite or, in fact, that's it. They can only take one suite away. So they take away one suite. And then I have to take away one suite. And then they take away the last suite. And then they would lose. Um, so in that situation, I guess if I went first, I'd have a winning strategy of taking two to begin with. The question here is, are there any values of N for which the second player has a winning strategy? Okay, an interesting problem and definitely not something you would see in an A-level maths exam, which is maybe what makes this even more interesting. Where can we begin with this? If you've never seen a problem like this before and you, you've got something like this in an interview, perhaps the most natural thing to do is just play about with this. Pick a value of N, a bit like I did with five, maybe a slightly bigger value might be a bit more useful here and just try and play. Maybe you, you can play against the interviewer and then you each take it in turns to take sweets from the pile. And now you might think this is a bit redundant, but you'll realize that actually you might pick up on some patterns or some, so, or some techniques here. I'm gonna dive right in with this solution. Uh, the trick here is you wanna think backwards. So from the end of the game backwards. So what I'm gonna do is draw up kind of like a, like a sequence here. So I'm gonna write the number one here, two here, three here, and so in fact, I'll write the numbers a bit more, a bit, a bit smaller. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I may add some more squares on later on if I feel the need to. So what I'm going to do is we're also going to assume in this problem that each player is playing optimally. So no one's going to give the other person a chance to win if they can avoid it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tick or cross each of these squares. So tick is going to mean something and a cross is going to mean something. So a tick here is going to mean um, we, we want to leave this number of sweets, this number oops, of sweets after our turn ends, after our turn ends. So let's say it's just my go the square one will be a ticked square because once I've finished, if I can leave one square or one suite left over, that would be great because I know that my opposition has to take that suite and they lose because the loser is the person who removes that last suite. And so I'm going to make a cross here to basically just mean the opposite. We don't want to leave this square. We don't want to leave this square uh, after our turn ends. So each square is either going to be a tick or a cross, and this is a perfectly determinable game. So let's look at the second square here. Would we want to leave the second square? So if we have our turn, would we want to finish our turn leaving two sweets in the pile? The answer is no, because if we leave two sweets in the pile, then the opposition can only pick up one sweet, leaving us with the final sweet to pick up. So just to illustrate that, let's say we finish our turn and we leave two sweets left. What the opposition will then do is they'll take one and they'll leave us with this one, which we are fourth to pick up. So we do not want to leave two suites in the pile. So we're going to put a cross there. What about three suites? Would we want to leave three suites in the pile? The answer is yes, because if we leave three suites in the pile after our turn, it's going to be the opposition's turn next, next and they'll have to take the third suite. They, because if there's three suites left, they can only take one suite because half of three is 1.5. And you're not allowed to take more than 1.5 suites. So you can only take one. And then there'll be two suites left and it will be our go. And as we've explained before, if there are two suites left and it's our go, we'll take that suite. 
the other person will then be forced to take the remaining suite. So three is a good square for us. We do want to leave three suites left in the pile if we can. Okay, how about four suites? Well, we don't want to leave four suites in the pile. And here's why. If we left four suites in the pile, then our opponent would take their go next. And if they're smart, they would just remove one of the suites. Why is that? Because then they leave three suites left. But we've already determined three is a good number to leave over. So if they've left three suites left in the pile, they are guaranteed to win. So we don't want them to be able to do that. So four is a bad number to leave the number to, to, to kind of leave behind after the end of our turn. Because as I say, if we do, they'll take away one suite, then there'll be three in the pile, and it will be Argo. So we're screwed. What about five? Five is a similar thing because if we leave five suites in the pile. One, two, three, four, five. Um, they can take away two, and then they're finishing their turn, leaving three suites in the pile, which is good for them, not for us. So we lose. So five is also a bad number. Same goes for six, because if we take six suites, um, if we leave six suites left, they're going to get rid of three, leaving three left in the pile after their go, so they're guaranteed to win. Seven is interesting, though, because now we have seven suites. Six, seven. How many suites are they allowed to remove? Well, they can either remove one, two, or three. But that's going to leave either four, five, or six suites in the pile. But four, five, and six are bad numbers. Those are, You do not want to leave that number of suites in the pile after your go. So if there are seven suites in the pile after our turn, now the opposition's turn, the opposition, no matter how many suites they take, they're either going to leave four, five, or suites, four, five, or six suites left on the table, which means it will then be Argo, and we're going to be guaranteed to win. So seven then is a good number for us. And then we realize eight, nine, and ten are all going to be bad numbers because they're all super close to seven that we can either take away one, two, or three suites away, and you know left with seven. And then that will be good for the opposition. And we can maybe spot a pattern here. What's the next good number going to be? The next good number is going to be 15. Because any number between 8 and 14, we can always remove enough suites to get us back down to 7. So if we leave 14 suites on the table, it will then be the opposition's go. And the opposition would just remove 7 suites. Uh, and then there'd be 7 suites left after their turn which is a good number for them, which means it's a bad number for us. Um, so all the numbers from 8 to 14 are bad, and then 15 would be good. And then similarly, 16 up to 31, they would all be bad numbers. Um, sorry, 16 up to 30 would be bad numbers, but then 31 would be a good number. And we can maybe spot a pattern in these numbers. 1, 3, 7, 15, 31. They are all of the form 2 to the n minus 1, where n is a positive integer. This is quite interesting. So you can actually prove this. And in fact, I'll maybe leave it as an exercise to you to prove this. It's not too difficult um, based on the observations we've made. But you can prove that any square that's of the form 2 to the n minus 1 is a good square. So now let's answer the question. What values of n are there for which the, maybe I shouldn't call this n, maybe call it 2 to the k where k is a positive integer. So we want to know, are there values of n for which the second player has a winning strategy? So um, the second player being the, the person who goes um, well, second. Um, and n is the number of suites that we start off with. So yes, there are. Um, so we want n to be of this form. So if n takes the form 2 to the k minus 1, the second player is guaranteed to win. Because let's just say seven. Let's say there's seven suites in the pile. Um, if player one has to start, they're going to have to remove one, two, or three suites, and they're going to leave themselves on a cross number. And then that's going to mean that's bad for player one. So player two is going to be guaranteed to win. So there are values of n for which uh, player two does have a winning strategy. It's anything of the form two to the k minus one. A pretty cool problem. I like this sort of one. Um, and there's lots of problems like this where the technique is just to think backwards. Think about near the end of the game 
and work your way backwards into what happens at earlier stages of the game. Um, you can make this problem a bit more interesting by maybe changing the rules a little bit. What if each person has to remove at least two sweets from the pile and taking no more than uh, than half of what remains? Um, and maybe going like that or changing the rules slightly. It's uh, lots of things you can do here. Um, but yeah, we'll finish there for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you have uh, some good luck in your in your interviews. If you've had them already, if you currently have them, I, I don't know why you're watching this video if you're during an interview right now, um, or if you have one in the near future, best of luck. Um, I hope they all go well. Let me know how they do in the comments down below. But thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.